I want to start off by saying f the ATF, f gun laws, f those constitution breaking motherfuckers. Now that I got that out there. Because usually when I report on this particular story, somehow people get confused with me reporting on what's going on with he's pro what's going on, which makes no sense, but whatever. I also want to add, don't take this as some sort of like, I told you so video or something like that, or I'm like trying to get the best of you. You guys are the victims here. The people that purchased force reset triggers are the victims here. They were told, yes, you could buy them. No, you can't buy them. Yes, you'll get in legal trouble if you get caught with one. No, you can't. There's been no really solid concrete information because there's two opposing forces on this. One's like, hey, like it or not, they're classified as a machine gun. These are your possible consequences. The other side's like, those guys don't know what they're gonna, even talking about. Even if you do get caught with one, the judge is literally just going to throw it out and it's not going to be a big deal at all. And I'll just leave it at that. So, I promised an update on Rare Breed. This is what is current as of the time of filming this. Again, this is a developing story. Things can change. Alright. So the original video, the one that got pulled down, what exactly was going on? Well, on January 13th, Crump got a tip from a very reliable source. Hey, the ATF is stacking up and they're staging up to hit BDU and FRT. He waited because what does that mean? Not a whole hell of a lot. Well, he gets con confirmation. Big Daddy Unlimited is currently being hit. Then he got his hands on the police document. The police document, which we will circle back to that on what I think that actually means is that, hey, this is a document going out to police stations describing what the force reset trigger is, classifying it as a machine gun, and basically reminding police officers that possession of one is a federal crime. Another thing I noticed while I was editing this video is if you look on the ATF letter to the police that they're sending out about the FRT, it does clearly state in that letter that a binary trigger is not a machine gun. So they want the cops to be able to tell the difference between a binary trigger and a force reset trigger. They do have different classifications. Obviously, force reset trigger would be a machine gun, binary trigger would not be, and they want the police to be aware of the differences. So then we all pulled our videos down because the PR guy, Lawrence, he was like, hey, that's all bullshit. Feds were never here, blah, 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 blah. blah. Triggers has not I repeat, has not been rated. And then I did my video responding to that one. And the reason I did my video in that way is because I actually followed him. So like three minutes after the video dropped, I already knew about it. And I called up Crump. I'm like, hey, uh, Lawrence said they didn't get hit. And he said he's been trying to get a hold of you. What's going on? He's like, well, Lawrence hasn't tried to get a hold of me. I've actually been trying to get a hold of him since day one. They were having problems with the feds because I would like to bring him on the show and do an interview with him. He's full of shit on that. They did not try to get a hold of me whatsoever. All right, update. Uh, remember, this video was shot a while ago. I've just been sitting on it because I was hoping to get a little bit better information for you guys before I dropped it. Unfortunately, it's not looking like that's going to happen. Uh, first update is that Crump did actually have a message sitting in his message request box on Twitter from somebody vaguely related to Rare Breed. No, Rare Breed did not try to get a hold of him. Some other third party did who he was not following, so it just sat in his message request. I would consider trying to get a hold of somebody like, I don't know, I mean, they both have Instagram, sending a PM on Instagram, maybe sending a message with the actual Rare Breed account on Twitter. This way it would have popped up, hey, you have a message. Or hell, even at the end of each one of his videos, he's got his email address on there. They could have sent an email. So I still don't can consider it Rare Breed trying to get a hold of Crump. So that, in my head, I mean, you guys can make your own decision, is still BS. So my video was based off the fact that Big Daddy Unlimited got hit. There's the police document, which we had. We were able to look at that. And the fact that I knew he was lying about trying to get a hold of Crump. So I'm like, well, hey, guys, you know, before you throw Crump under the bus... Step back for a minute, could be because there's multiple possibilities of what's going on. If you haven't seen that video, this is what it looks like right here. Go check it out. 
So, I did that video and then it was just a waiting game. Trying to get confirmation, were they or were they not hit? Because we dropped the video from what I understand, when our videos were dropping, the feds were in by the by a BDU or they were about to go in. The point is like, we jumped the gun. We beat the feds. Our videos dropped before people started getting hit. So, did our videos postpone Rare Breed from getting hit? Did they not get hit at all? Did we prevent the raid? Not likely. If anything, it got postponed or temporarily prevented because the whole idea of feds going in is to be a surprise so you don't have time to like sit behind your door with your AR-15 and wait for them. So, that's where we're at right now. Uh, he reached out for comment from them as of Sunday to find out, you know, to confirm they haven't been hit or to find out, oh, they got hit hours later or the next day or just any sort of information he could get a hold of them. And that was to, he reached out to the owner, Kevin Maxwell, and their PR guy, Lawrence Domenico. Neither of them have responded back to him and this went out Sunday. So it's, been a, a reasonable amount of time and he even sent out the information he had to their lawyer trying to get a comment nothing nobody's talking so did they get hit I don't know the point is as of right now no one knows next update uh rear breed did get a hold of crump now uh they actually talked I'm not privy to what was said inside the conversation I asked him if he's going to drop a video explaining all of this he said no but he is going to drop an article on Ammo Land, so go check that out there. But they did actually talk to Crump, which is a good indication that things are doing a little bit better than I originally thought. Because typically when a company is like under the thumb and they're getting squeezed, what they do is go silent. That's the most logical step. That's what you should do if you're a company and you're getting squeezed. So they actually did take an interview with them. Remember, this is days after I shot this video. So this would be Thursday, and he was trying to get a hold of them since Sunday, so they did get a hold of him. Uh, take that as you may. Again, we got to wait to see what was actually said in the conversation, but he told me he is putting an article out on Ammo Land. So other than that, this video is still pretty accurate. So the known phone call, the police letter, the fact that they were right about Big Daddy Unlimited getting hit in, getting hit that's why I did my other video and that's why I said hey wait you know before you throw crump under the bus wait because there's definitely something going on we just may have been wrong about the time or exactly what is going on and it sucks because well when everybody pulled down their videos and then just posted Lawrence's video without putting some sort of context behind it a lot of their subscribers assumed that crump had misled their favorite youtuber whoever that may be and Lawrence is right, Crump was wrong, and now Crump just made their favorite YouTuber look bad, so they came over to his channel in a wave and started viciously attacking him. They probably actually got him to quit YouTube. Whether that quit is permanent or temporary, I don't know. It really kind of sucks because they more or less took away one of the greatest assets we have in the Second A community. Yes, there are plenty of other journalists out there that get the same information as him, the difference is, is he shares it with us immediately so we have enough time to do something about any sort of information that's out there. The other journalists just hold on to that information. This way everybody that wants to know about it have to go to their channel so it hits a much smaller audience. And usually by the time you hear about it, it's too late. Whatever they're reporting on has already happened and that's why you're searching it out in the first place. Where he'll send out his information to every single YouTuber he knows this way everybody knows at the exact same time as soon as possible so we have an option to do something about it. So that's probably gone. Again, we'll have to see whether or not he decides to permanently quit YouTube or if this is just a temporary thing. But again, it sucks either way. So let's circle back around to the police document. Now, allegedly, this is going out to every single police station. That has been confirmed yet because I haven't had a bunch of sheriffs getting a hold of me saying like, hey, look at what I got. Will that go to every single police station or will it just go to certain ones where they know the triggers are? What exactly does that police document mean? 
As of right now, we're not 100% sure. Worst case scenario is they've already got the postmasters helping them and they have all the addresses that forced reset triggers have been shipped to because all they do is like, here's, we bought this, this is the description of the package, I wanna know every single address this package has went to. They'll get all the addresses and then typically in the past, but this whole case has been really unusual because what they're doing in this particular case, they usually don't do. Usually they show up, seize everything right away, hit somebody with a federal charge, hit all their customers with letters like, hey, you have so many days to respond, and then the creators that support it, they usually go after them. Or at least that's what happened in the auto key card. And that's typically what I've happened, I've seen happen with like solvent traps, everything else. So, worst case scenario is they've already talked to the postmasters. They've already got all the addresses where these triggers have been sent to, and those letters are specifically going to those uh, police departments, and then they're going to show up and hand deliver a letter knowing you already have the trigger with a picture of the trigger, and if you deny buying it, well, then they'll come back, kick in your door with a warrant, and look for the trigger. Best case scenario is it's just a widespread letter that's going to every single police station, and it really doesn't affect anybody at this point in time. Either way, you should be prepared. What prepared means to you may be totally different from what prepared means to another person. If I had a YouTube channel and it was clear I possessed the trigger after the date of the cease and desist letter became public, because in the cease and desist letter, they declared the trigger itself as a machine gun in or outside of your rifle. That trigger by itself is the machine gun which makes it way worse than just drilling a third hole in your receiver because there's a paper trail proving you had purchased this particular trigger that is now classified as a machine gun. So hopefully this is just a general letter just so police are aware of it so if they stumble across one that they know to arrest the person and charge them with a federal crime and get the ATF involved. Worst case scenario, I meant to say that was best case scenario if I didn't say it I can't remember worst case scenario is they're targeting specific towns where they know the triggers reside in and the police will also receive their addresses hopefully that's not the case I really hope that's not the case because then yeah you've basically drilled the third hole except there's a paper trail of you drilling that third hole same exact thing a third hole is just as bad as the trigger because they're both classified as a machine gun we'll have to wait and see how things pan out if I was in the particular situation where I had knowingly proved that I had purchased a trigger, which was classified as a machine gun, after the date of the letter, I would at least keep some money somewhere or have a retainer on a lawyer just in case they do come. Then I at least have a chance, a snowball's chance in hell at at least trying to fight it. Because the ATF typically wins all their cases. And don't forget, even if you win the case, Going through the process, it's probably going to take two years of your life. It's probably going to cost you a minimum of $50,000. It could lead to divorces, loss of jobs, busted in front doors, loss of your things you're paying payments on. Going through the process of being found innocent or guilty is usually just as bad as being found guilty. Look at Ruby Ridge and Waco, Texas. None of those guys were convicted of a crime yet. And look at how the ATF handled it. Don't think that they've suddenly changed overnight. This is a problem. So, did they or did they not get raided? Until a FOIA requests come back and we can actually hold the warrant and hold the seizure list, there's no way to confirm that they did get raided. Because of the lack of the comment, I don't know. I have no idea whether or not they did or did not get raided. What they need to do is go out and start making comments with those creators so they can ask them the questions and confirm, no, we did not, or we did not at the time our PR guy dropped the video, but we did as of this date, or anything. Because we may have prevented it a couple of months just by dropping those videos, and now all of a sudden the ATF doesn't have the element of surprise. Who knows? But because they already hit Big Daddy Unlimited, they already had a document prepared to go to the police. I think best case scenario is we prolong them getting raided. They may have already been hit. I don't know. So, I hear a lot of people talking about customer lists. Why don't these companies destroy the customer list? Don't forget, Auto Key Card never had a single customer list. And yet, every single person that bought one of those basically got a letter. 
They just go to the post office and they get the address of every place in Force Reset or uh, FRT. The wide, uh, not the wide open, the force reset trigger, well that's easy because I'm pretty sure that's like the only thing they sell. So every person that had had something shipped from them, well they would get some sort of interaction with the ATF. Big Daddy Unlimited, it's a little bit more difficult because they sell lots of things. So what they would do is they would buy a trigger before they raided them. They would measure the package, see what it ships like. They would go to the postmaster. And they'd want every single package in this size box that weighs this amount flagged. And then they'd probably just do some sort of mass letter to all of them. So either you bought it or you didn't. Who knows? But again, customer lists or saying that they're not going to give up a customer list or this whole customer list thing, it's irrelevant. They literally go to the post office and that's where they get the addresses from. Anyway, thank you for watching. And I apologize. We jumped the gun on that. We should have had the warrant in hand or the seizure list in hand or an employee confirm that the feds have been there before we included them into the raid. Big Daddy Unlimited did in fact get raided. They seized all the wide open triggers. That is a fact. This police letter that's made by the ATF, this is what it looks like right here. That's a fact. That did happen. Did forced reset or rear read get hit? I don't know. Did they get hit the next day? I don't know. Did they get hit hours after they dropped the video? I don't know. So, as I know more, you guys will know more. Do what you can to prepare if you have one. Just be aware. There may be some sort of letter or some sort of ATF interaction. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you'd like to help support the channel, i my Patreon right there. I also have affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on those links, even if you don't purchase what that particular link is for, just clicking on it and doing the Amazon shopping you were already going to do anyway, I had a little kickback for it because you came there off my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.